university. Everyone was like, oh my God, are you going to move in with Jeff? Are you going to move in with Jeff? This school was literally insane. I spent a lot of money. Welcome. My name is Alexis Barber. I'm 22. I work full time in big tech and I'm also a content creator focused on all things realistic fashion, finances, and career here in New York City. And today we're doing a tipsy Q&A. So the T is... I have so many questions ranging from influencer life to my relationship to my job at Google. So we're just going to get into all of it. Let's get started with some money talk. So can you talk about what you save the way you talk about what you spend? This would be really helpful. If you don't know, I do a lot of what I spend in a day videos on TikTok and on Instagram and they do really well because I spend a lot of money because I live in New York City and I'm running this business, which costs a lot of money, as well as just like trying to be a young, hot, fun 22 year old. Saving is something I've struggled with a lot. So saving for me has to do with literally hiding money from myself. First, I deduct from my 401k. So Google has a really great 401k match program. So that comes out of my paycheck before I even see it in my bank account. So I have a really great savings in my 401k. Additionally, I have an emergency fund, which is three to six months of basic expenses. And I have that in a high yield savings account. Then I take a certain percentage every month that goes to sinking funds, which means it's something I'm going to buy in the near future. Winter. Um, I'm going to visit my boyfriend's family in Rwanda. That's going to be an expensive plane ticket. So I have like a certain amount a month that comes out of my regular paycheck that I put into just another checking account because I know I'm going to spend that soon. And then once you have an emergency fund set up, you actually don't need to be saving any more money. You should be investing that money. So I split it between crypto and then regular investment. I would say I save probably 30 30 to 40% of my income. Um, and that's split between 401k, HSA, and investments that go into my investment portfolio. The number one thing you should be doing is saving for an emergency fund, 100%. On to relationship stuff. Uh, if I were, if you were single in New York City, what would you do or go to to meet a Jeff level guy? Uh, so my boyfriend, his name is Jeff. He is incredible. He's a software engineer. We've been dating for four and a half years. If I were to go out to meet him, I'm just trying to think of like where his friends are. Like single friends, like what do they do? I think that they go out a lot in Brooklyn or in Bushwick to like see really cool DJs. So I would say find the cool DJs that you like and then go out to see them. And it's also sort of like your network and like who you know. I have never dated in the era of there being apps. I've never done that. So I'm not your biggest relationship, like how to find a guy, girl. I'm the type of person who is gonna give you advice about how to keep your relationship strong. By no means, four and a half years ago, were we as mature and smart and good at our relationship and like good at communication. I have a whole podcast episode where you can listen to us like chat about it, but basically, because we have the same long-term goals and we love each other, we have so much fun together. When we ran into big issues, like we were able to handle those. So if you need relationship help, I'm here for that. And one of those questions is, do you ever feel pressure from people in your life to move in with your boyfriend. People look at me weird when I say that I live I live in the same city as my boyfriend, but not with him. I hate this shit because I, when I was moving to New York City, everyone was like, oh my God, are you gonna move in with Jeff? Are you gonna move in with Jeff? Nobody asked Jeff that ever. Same thing with getting married. It's like, oh, you have a boyfriend? Oh, do you guys think, do you think you guys will get married? Like that's the first question you get as a woman. And I do think that that's very frustrating because he doesn't feel the same pressure. So when I would bring up those like questions of long-term things, like moving in together, getting engaged and getting married, he was like, why are you bringing this up? And I was like, are you kidding? Like, do people not ask you about this every single day of your life? And he was like, no. And I was like, completely unfair. This is a personal choice and it's nobody else's business when you move in with your boyfriend. When it comes to moving in together, this is a choice that you want to make on your relationship's timeline, not on the pressure of other people's timeline. So while I do feel it, I think the way that I combat it is I have very strong reasons for not wanting to live with my boyfriend. If you don't have those and if you do wish you lived together and you and your boyfriend are just not on the same page and you just don't live together, then I think that, that dealing with this pressure can be a lot harder. I don't want to live with Jeff because one, I am 22 years old. If I lived with my boyfriend, I'd become a hermit and I would never go outside. Like when we are together, this is what we do every other night when he comes over. Take a shower, make dinner, watch TV and go to sleep. Like we don't do anything. And I think that that would turn into my life. And I don't like that. Second of all, I feel like it's hard to separate your 
yourself from a person if you move in together too early in a relationship. I think that both of us have so much more self-development we want to do. And I think if you know you're going to be with your partner long term, then it's okay that you don't live together early on because you have your whole lives to live together. Basically, there was this study done in that I learned about in my marriage 101 class that I took at Northwestern with Dr. Alexander Solomon. Basically, the people who rushed into moving in together out of convenience, they essentially divorced at higher rates as opposed to the people who made it a conscious choice. So when you fall into something and you just do it out of pressure, out instead of out of your relationship's needs and your current place in life, then that's when it becomes problematic. I think we would prefer to move in together about a year before we were to get engaged and then buy a house etc but i do think i will move in with him before we were to get engaged or to get married but because we've been together for so long like we understand each other pretty well honestly it makes me nervous like the concept of moving in with him i just couldn't do it like boarding school i went to boarding school for six years um it wasn't crazy because my parents did live like 40 minutes drive away so at one point like when i first was diagnosed with ms like my parents would bring me food every week because like the cafeteria wasn't making like the right food for the diet I needed to follow for my MS like so very close to me this school was literally insane my graduating class was 16 people and it was a total of like less than 80 kids um, in six grades and so I started in seventh grade and went until I graduated and it is technically like academically the best school in Missouri and I agree with that like I had an amazing education but there is no reason that there should be that few of children in one school like by the end of it I actually hated every single person in my grade except for one girl and we're still friends to this day but like literally at that point like the drama was out of control like there were siblings there was people sneaking out there was like people having the sex there was people drinking like it was out of something out of a movie for sure like it was a traumatizing no because my camera literally just fell out it heard me talking about my school and was like no ma'am there was just a lot of anti-blackness in general at that school and a lot of it came from the sheltered environment of the people in st louis the sheltered environment that all of us were within and the fact that like none of the teachers really respected the movement either and so my junior year mike brown was shot near my house which was yes far away because it was in the rich my school was in the richer part of st louis i lived in the poorer part and the way my school responded to that was just so toxic and I just, I think a lot of the fact that I've stifled my very outgoing, energetic personality is because in that environment, when I spoke up, I was deemed angry, aggressive, and problematic and I was no longer respected and that is why I think I struggled so much in college and like just wanted to assimilate and be perfect because in that school environment, being my true self was punished, particularly by like the school administration, not by the students. I think I had a good amount of support there, but just had a bad reputation of being like the angry black girl. It was really, really traumatizing and hard. I was told once that like my skin color was gonna be my extracurricular for applying to colleges by another student, even though I was literally head of five clubs by the end of my time there. Once I was discouraged from applying to Northwestern because they didn't think I would get in. I once had a teacher call me an angry black girl in a classroom, um, I think three days before Darren Wilson was not indicted while having a conversation about whether white people should be able to say the N-word. A discussion in AP literature. Bad vibes all around. I'm grateful, I think I'm grateful for the experience. I really don't know. Like most traumatizing experiences that I have, I can be grateful for, but I do kind of wish I went to a different high school. What are your favorite sources shop including for clothes and jewelry? Something I've been really struggling with recently is how much fast fashion has a fucking chokehold on my life. If I were answering this in a fast fashion, I'd be like, Princess Polly, Zara. But I really wanna move away from shopping at those places because I do think it is hurting the environment. And I live in New York City, which has the best thrifting and the best 
secondhand clothes in the world. So as I'm building my fall wardrobe, I'm definitely gonna take into consideration what I already have. And I'm going to either shop slow fashion, so more expensive pieces or secondhand for everything else, which I do think is really hard because like as an influencer, part of your job is like to sell clothes and stuff to people, but it just doesn't sit right. And my style is very minimal, um, which leads me to the next question, which is tips on building a wardrobe with neutral colors that all go together. I just stick to three big colors. I stick to beige, to black, and to white. And those mix and match really well. And then what I add in is good denim and flowy linens. And I think those always make a really nice statement look. I am going to do a series, I think, on building a capsule wardrobe on TikTok. Definitely let me know if you think that's a good idea because I really want to do it. Where do I shop for wardrobe basics? Wardrobe basics, 100% Everlane. They are incredible. I love the tops, the t-shirts, all of it. The fit is amazing, plus the jeans, and they are a sustainable brand, and they're really affordable, so I love Everlane. I would also do Zara. A lot of my Zara stuff has lasted a really long time, specifically like their stretchy tank tops, um, and a good amount of their denim has lasted a long time for me. Some of it rips sometimes, but whatever. Something I've been struggling with is Botox, fillers, and plastic surgery. On one hand, I get it and I want it, but the other hand, I think it's a public health issue and it makes things better for one, but worsens the problem for the collective. Plastic surgery. I have two schools of thought here. The first is you should be able to do whatever you want with your body 100%. The reality of our world is that all of us want to fit in, we want to be liked, and we want to be attractive, right? But the truth of the matter is Sometimes in order to look like that, you have to give things up. And so it's about how much you really want to give up in order to have that external validation. Because no, it's not internal. Like you're not, if you feel more confident in yourself, that's wonderful. But like question how you feel about the male gaze, but whatever. I've been really struggling with body image for the last few weeks into a very detrimental place where I even considered going back to dieting. For me, when it came, when it comes to being 20 pounds thinner, because that's how I feel, I, I was like, that's the body that like I see on Instagram that I love, that I think is really aesthetically pleasing. The body I want is 20 pounds lighter than who I am. So am I willing to give up eating out whenever I want to, seeing my friends, having a glass of wine? Am I willing to give all of that up so that I can look that certain way? And that is a question you have to ask yourself. And I think of it the same way when it comes to Botox, plastic surgery, and fillers. Like if you wanna give up the safety of your health, like all these, all these things for your body and like to do that, then totally fine, that's your life but don't lie about it. I think that that's really where the detrimental issue comes in because everyone makes these decisions for themselves and they make them out of the male validation, external validation, basically just so that we can appear one way to society, which is innate and makes sense. You wanna survive. I don't personally think that some anything is wrong with it. I just think that people aren't questioning enough why they want those things and why they're giving up certain things in order to look a certain way. I don't think that I'm gonna stray away from plastic surgery. Like I'm sure I'm gonna get Botox, etc. But like my issue is when people aren't honest about it. Like you need to be 100% honest with people if you get Botox or fillers or whatever because you are perpetuating like a false ideal of what people can look like and be like. How do I work around my huge imposter syndrome in my new job? So something I learned about imposter syndrome recently was that, especially if you're a black woman or a woman, is that you should actually have the opposite of imposter syndrome because you know how much more work it took you to get to that place than somebody else. So especially if you're a black woman in a workplace, you should say you don't have imposter syndrome because you know that it took you, based on pure statistics, so much more to get into this role than it did anybody else. So why would you be thinking that you are not capable? Tangibly on a day-to-day -day basis, the way that I get over imposter syndrome is one, being really organized, brag book, where I track all of my positive and negative feedback as well as my networking connections, I have that. Two, I have my project tracker so I know everything I'm doing so that you can't come for my work because I know what I'm doing. But what you definitely need to do is exercise the muscle of getting out of that feeling of imposter syndrome and therefore proving to yourself that you're capable. And that comes through sometimes it's speaking in meetings, sometimes it's getting 
getting good feedback on a presentation. But the best thing that you can do for yourself is to just start to trust yourself more. And when you do have a moment where you feel like you're failing, that it's not a reflection of who you are, it's just a normal part of the journey. The other thing about imposter syndrome is that literally everybody has it. Like people at the top, literally who I've spoken to in meetings, like top level executives at Google, they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. We're all winging it. Everybody's winging it. How do you motivate yourself to wake up early and work out and be productive? This is probably problematic, but it's because I'm running from anxiety. Like I don't have time to do things. If I don't do my morning walk, my journaling, I have that time for me. By the end of the day, I have a pit in my stomach. I'm anxious and I feel like shit. I have to do it or I don't feel like myself. And I didn't do it twice this week. Spell into an anxious spiral. It's not so much a motivation. I just know my brain works better in the morning. So I work, wake up early. If your brain doesn't work better in the morning, then don't wake up early. Like find out when your brain works the best and schedule your life around that. So my brain after 5 p.m. doesn't work. So I don't expect myself to do anything after 5 p.m. My boyfriend sleeps until 9 a.m. every single day. It's really annoying when he sleeps over because I'm like sitting here trying to work. And he is very successful, works a nine to five in tech and it also has a very successful side business. He just codes till 3 a.m. and that's like how his brain works. It doesn't mean he's not smart. He works out almost every single day. He eats healthy he's very athletic and he gets all of his stuff done because he doesn't put the pressure on himself to be my schedule you know so that's what's really important about it do I like Garcelle and Crystal I think that Crystal was scarred really early in the season and so she's not being her full self but her full self I bet is like iconic you know I love her because Sutton is crazy like Oh, love hate relationship with Sutton like I don't like the way she reacted to the whole crystal thing and I agree with crystal in that situation but Sutton was just being absurd Garcelle I like Garcelle she's she doesn't have the best taste in my opinion um but I do like her and I agree with a lot of the things she says like she's telling it like it is 100% um but Kyle is still my favorite housewife Okay, how to meet new people in New York City. When I first moved to New York City, I moved in COVID, so it was weird timing, but basically I just like wasn't afraid to meet someone new for the first time. I had a friend in college who was like, not even, we weren't even close, she was younger than me. She's like, oh, my sister's moving to New York, you guys should chat. So I went to brunch with this girl and now we go out like every weekend, she's one of my best friends. And so it's that type of thing where it's like, don't put too much pressure on finding the right friend group super early and just say yes to a bunch of copy dates and stuff like that. DM people on Instagram who you're like slightly friends with, invite people to things. Like I think it's much easier to like text somebody and be like, hey, like this concert is happening. Like, do you want to come with me? Or like, oh, I have a reservation at this spot. I'm going to bring a few friends. Would you want to come? Like, I think that's a really good way to put yourself out there. If you are struggling to make friends, I would set a goal for yourself like every week. I'm gonna meet one new person until you find those friends. Try to be outgoing, do the five, four, three, two, one, five second rule, and then just go up to somebody and say hi to them. That could be your best friend. Okay, that's the end of today's q and I'll try to do these monthly. Let me know what you think of them. I love chatting with you in general. I do them almost like pretty much every other week on my Instagram, so be sure to follow there. Um, and I love answering questions in TikTok videos too, so just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. So thank you so much for listening and for watching. My name is Alexis Barber, and do not forget that you are too smart to not love yourself.